Oh, this is YouTube? Yep. I did do Twitch, and then um, the Joshua Bardwell's video got me some more YouTube subscribers, so that's why I'll just stream, oh, right on. I'll just stream on YouTube instead. Um, I'll pause this, because this is, like, super delayed. Yeah, that is super trippy. Yeah. Um, I'm, like, I'm really terrible as far as, like, streaming and editing goes. <laughs> I've, like, changed my laundry over while yeah. I was streaming. You've probably seen this. <laughs> yeah, I've watched your streams. Okay. Just, just playing with cats and stuff while you're streaming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Scott, and I'm a founder and engineer at it, my company called Chickadee Tech, and introduce yourself. I'm Sean Chamberlain, uh, just kind of co-conspirator with Chickadee Tech, just helping them yeah. out do some, do some things that I've seen that I'd like to do, so. Yeah, so Sean, is, uh, Sean and I met through our Seattle multi rotors group, um, although I'm, I don't know if I've ever actually flown with you. Yeah, nobody actually has flown with me. I just, I'm down there in Tacoma, a little isolated yeah. on an island. And... Yeah. Hmm. Um, but, so, so we hooked up uh, and talked about electronics design, and uh, one of the common requests that we've got since the launch of Polystack was a, a power distribution board, or PDB. And uh, actually, Sean's been working on that for a while. So, uh, Sean, why don't you just say, tell us how you got into well, originally PDB design? I got into PDB design uh, just for an application method. Uh, there was when I first started into the the hobby, I got a NAS thirty two, and the only there was only a couple of like PDB designs, PDB designs that were out, and that was like for the Atom. For the, hmm. the Atom V1 by uh, Rotor X. They had a couple PDBs, and I just wanted something that would make it super thin, keep that center of gravity low, right? and just kind of just streamline the overall look. I seen a couple yeah. quads on uh, Reddit, mm -hmm. and I was just like, dude, those things are flat. Yeah. But I don't, I don't like having to do a power harness or a wire harness right? Um, just for maintenance purposes. Yeah. So I wanted something that's flat, will just streamline the whole... Mm -hmm. uh, the connections and be also really accessible. Yeah. So, the first couple things I did was for the NAS 32 Rev 5, mm -hmm. and uh, then later on switching to uh, the NAS Mini, the Afro Mini, mm -hmm. the little tiny guy. Yeah. So, I made a couple PDBs. It's like that, a half board. Yeah. So, basically, the, PD, the PDB would just stack under that. So, mm -hmm. you have not an all-in-one, but almost the functionality of an all-in-one. Right. Just streamline, light. Right. Because I fly the I fly micros, I fly micros yeah. primarily because uh, those FAA standards. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. So what are we gonna do? You hold it up. Oh, this is the PDB prototype yeah, version three. Good. Yeah, that's that's what I usually do. <laughs> it's fancy. Um. We've gotten some requests to do ground on it. Um, currently, there's only signal wires. Yeah. Um, different different folks, different strokes. So, so why, what, well, why don't you explain the different parts of it first? Um, before you tell them what you're going to change. Oh, yeah, sorry. The, uh, right, so what's the general layout that you have? Basically, the general layout is we have an uh, MPS 2307 doing, it's our, it's our buck converter. It's doing a switch mode power supply. Um, giving us at max we can do three amps out but currently it's in a config for two mm -hmm. being that the the df40 will only supply yep. 1.8 right. which is all we should need going into the stack yep um so what did you think about for the for the pad layout like you and i talked about this a lot the pad layout was intricate because the way that it stacks, we wanted we wanted something that would stack right in the same footprint as the FC. So mm -hmm. the your micro USB connector here yep. kind of created a a problem when I was <laughs> wanting when I was wanting to just lay it out similar to an X config. Right. But because we had already started the production of the the F three FC and F four FC, yep. and that's pretty much stationary and we're not going to change that yeah we wanted to to shift it around uh, so it created more of like an h layout you can definitely create an x like mm -hmm. you can build an x quad with it it just comes 
comes down to a little uh, uh, puzzle for wiring, really. Right. It's uh, pretty much what it boils down to. Kind of got to route wires a certain way to get an X config, but I've, right. I've built one and uh, it works. Nice. So the general setup here is that there's a, for every ESC, you have a, a positive and a negative. Those are the large pads. And then there's these small through holes, right? Yep. And those are the signal. And so one thing that's really cool about this uh, with what you've done is you've actually made it so that all of the soldering that you're doing um, to the ESCs, at least, is is on this board, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Just so it, it's pretty much a, just a direct interface without having to, to do any more soldering than just pretty much lay out your, lay out your ESCs, lay out your motors, solder it up to the, the PDB, and then click in what you want to click in and right. fly it off. Right, so we just, one thing, uh, so this, the EC signals are actually coming through this connector here on the side. People could see that, see there. I think that's really hard to see, I think. <laughs> yeah, so why didn't you talk about the challenges of that? Because it wasn't, like we're on V3, right? Yeah, this is, this is V3, and this was pretty much uh, the biggest challenge, is finding, finding a pin that, that would slide into this board and also be compatible with the 3.5 millimeter stack stack height mm -hmm. of the DF40, the 20 pin DF40 that we have here. Mm -hmm. um, finding something that would fit under that criteria and then also interface with just your regular, uh, your standard, your factory, or not factory standard, your industry standard 64, 0.64 by 0.64 pin headers. Mm -hmm. um, that shows to be just a pain in the butt. That, <laughs> that's actually what caused the last two revisions. Yeah. Um, so what we actually have is it's a it's a receptacle by Milmax. A couple other companies produce them, but um, it's a receptacle that goes through hole at one point two millimeters and allows for about I don't know point two on either side because we have to take into consideration that the square is actually not a circle, and these are right. made for a circle, but they're also compatible with a friction fit of a square. Mm -hmm. um, so just kind of taking measurements and figuring out the, the plating of the holes, so for the precision of the, the through hole receptacle. Yeah. If that makes any sense. I feel like I just talked in a circle twice. No, I, I get what you're saying. And, and then you also had the issue that I actually shifted the holes. Yes, yes. So, <laughs> so the, the revision that I was working off of was... Uh, revision 4. Revision 4. And this is now, what, revision 9? Nine? 9, yeah. Yeah, so the, the one PDB, I, the, what was it, revision 2, I think, I designed, and the holes were shifted about, what was it, about a millimeter off? Yeah, not very much. So, <laughs> so like, I got it here, and then I was like, oh, look, cool, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> they were just missing by a millimeter. Yeah, and that one was too tall, yeah. though, right? Also. Yeah, that one also was too tall. I tried something with the uh, twelve ten capacitors for mm -hmm. your um, for your inductor to yep. your ground. Yep. Yeah, and it was just it was grounding out on one of your capacitors on the bottom of the board. So I just went back to twelve oh six. <laughs> yeah, that, like I, I have a reasonably well defined standard for like how the expansions mm -hmm. interact with each other, yeah. but I basically didn't pay attention to that for the flight controller, yeah. um, especially the bottom side of it. So that if anybody actually looks at the like standard, it's it's not very standard. So yeah, this feeds a uh, divided voltage at uh, we had a ten k and a hundred k in there. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a. Uh, a diode to prevent any kind of huge shock to the board, uh, mm -hmm. to the, well, the IC for power regulation. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to cover really here. Right. So this, this does uh, voltage monitoring, but doesn't do current monitoring. Correct. And that's basically because we thought about it too late. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So it, it may come in the future. Well, um, once, once you released, everybody kind of gave their input, and towards the, yeah. once everything was already kind of set into production, people gave started giving their input, and they're like, we'd really like to see a 
current monitor. Yeah. I was like, yeah, Joshua Bardwell was. I know, we should have. <laughs> should have took a poll. Of whatever. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we're learning. <laughs> we'll, we'll get it done. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um. So this is basically the closest we've gotten right with this revision. Yes. Um. This is flyable. It's flyable. <laughs> we haven't flown it this yet. Is, right? This is like, this is flyable. I've. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't flown it yet. Yeah, I don't have one that's flying yet. Nope. I, I do want to put one on we'll one definitely. of my quads. Um, i got to figure out which one. I, I'm really tempted to buy a new quad, actually. Yeah. Maybe I'd use it on that. I said let's stack it up and show them how thin it is. Okay, so, so, so this is what we're what we're starting with here. And uh, all this stuff, this is just a, a carbon fiber plate to hold the bolts so that they don't fall out when I hold it like this. And then we've got some spacers just to give us some a little height, and then we've got some nuts there. Um, so basically, if you're if you're picturing this on your quad, think of it kind of from this level upwards. Um, although there are some uh, pins that hang out there that you'll either need to make space for or you'll need to clip. But uh, this is also a little different because of the board that we used. It was a it was a point eight millimeter board. When whenever it comes from the factory, we ship with a one point six millimeter board, so that space will be cut down. We by could actually another. change that. Like, yeah, we're gonna have to do a custom panel. Yeah, for the, for the copper weight that we want. Yeah, um, so we can actually create a different board we could, if we wanted to. We could ask them to accommodate for different those. costs. Of that. We'll see. We'll s cross that bridge when we yeah. when we start the when we decide run. to do some production on it. So let's stack it up here. Oh, sorry. That's my fault. Just gently pushing it down and then wait for the click. Love that click. It's your new board that has that. So this is overall stack height. So that's from a two, side profile. Right. So that's two of the three boards that you would need to get started. Correct. So that's just your FC, your PDB, yeah. and then whatever. The sky's the limit on the other boards. Yep. Yeah. It's not really towards your ethos though, right? Like you like to have I like super thin. Yeah, I like I like super thin. I like modular super thin and light. So I'm gonna have a PDB, an FC. You got two for Z. three. <laughs> it's not it's not super thin, but it is light and modular. It is it is light. It's it's relatively thin. I mean when you look at other stack heights of of other boards, mm -hmm. you're talking depending on what you're putting in there. So I, if we just go with a, a regular 30, 36 by 36 board, your, your basic, let's go for it, let's go with the knees, they're, mm -hmm. they're really common in the, sure. yeah. in the hobby. So you have your knees, you have some form of power distribution, Yep. and then um, if you have a PDB for your knees, you could get it a little bit thinner, right. but you have people shoving wires under the knees between their... Right. Their power distribution board, which is usually right. something that doesn't have ESC signals fed into yeah. it. So you got, we'll say, five, six millimeters there, yeah. whereas here we have three and a half, as yeah. pretty much as thin as you could get it without squishing I the guess wire. it's more like it's more like four or five, though, right? Yeah. Including, I mean, including the PCB. Well, just between the boards, yes. Sure, yeah. And then plus, plus your screws, I mean, you're still... Still thin. It's a thin, thin enough yeah. for me because a lot of the, I've been getting into X's, so like, okay. um, a lot of the problem is now that I'm realizing the thinner I build it, the higher I have to jack the camera up to get it out of sight of the props. Oh. <laughs> I hadn't thought a, about that. Yeah, I didn't think about it either. Yeah, that until, you had to tilt it back. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think about it either until like I was building something uh, this past weekend and I yeah. built it at like, I think it came out to be maybe 16, 15 millimeters. And then the camera was just like, the props were like right Ooh. in your eyes. You just kind of, yeah. I, I don't know, that bugs me. I like yeah. I like the, the bird's Unobst eye view. Unobstructed. Unobstructed yeah. view, yeah that's, yeah. that's what I enjoy. But, uh, so yeah, it's, I guess it's yeah, so the, <laughs> full circle. Yeah, the other thing, uh, another piece of feedback that I've gotten about the existing power board is that it hangs out, right? And you talked about using an X. Yes. Yeah, you, you think it's silly too. I think I'm. I'm pretty sure everybody thinks it's silly. I, I it was I, a. <laughs> when I first seen your, that was what actually got me onto your project. I saw your power board and I was just like, 
You're like, you need a new Which, one. Yeah. Just, That's terrible. He's going to need some help. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank because, you for the help. Because I, I, I just, I was just like, I like the streamline. I like the small footprint. Yeah. I was like, I saw the potential. I saw the potential in yeah, the small, yeah. super small footprint. Yep. Relatively thin, st- the thin stacking mm-hmm. height. Yep. And then the expandability, like the mm-hmm. ability to expand on the platform is just yep. phenomenal. Yep. So I was like, there's one thing that's missing. It's a great idea. It's a beautiful yeah, board. Right. Everything looks great. Great functionality. Yep. New tech. Uh, but that power board. Yeah. That power working board. with a Pololu. I love Pololus. They have, yeah, yeah. They have a great peak to peak consistency, and those guys are doing good things over there in Vegas. Yes. Yeah. But uh, I wanted something that would fit seamlessly under the board for an X config because yeah. a lot of people are going to X configs. Yeah, totally. And I may go that way myself. They're they're nimble, like, and they don't require a lot of tuning because mm-hmm. most of your, I mean, most of your PIDs are configured for that X config, configured mm-hmm. for uh, equal distance, equal distance to yeah. the motors. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess just to give people background because I still have a lot of the old power boards to sell mm-hmm. too. Yeah. Um, the reason that I went that way is because I actually wanted the minimal stack height. Yeah. Um, because those boards, like this is a three and a half millimeter connector, but you that also includes like all your PDB wires. Um, but without being able to do a full PDB, which would be extra design overhead, like Correct. Pololu designs great regulators. Oh, Why yeah. would I redesign one? And then you came along and you made an awesome one too. Um, so I was like, okay, well, if I'm not doing a PDB, let me minimize the height. And the only way to do that while kind of attaching the regulator was to stick it out the back. And I fly H's, and so I didn't, at the time, think too much about that. Oh, no, definitely. Um, like, that's, like, that's exactly what I saw of yours. I was like, and the H's, X's weren't really big when you started the design on it, either. Like, yeah, last October. Yeah, so. Yeah, because that was one of the first boards I designed. It took yeah. me a while to get it right. <laughs> um, which is surprising, given that it's, like, two resistors and a connector. <laughs> um, but, you know, I played around with the whole layout, and... Mm-hmm. and the early boards had the connectors breaking off a lot because um, the pads were too far apart. Yeah. On the footprint, so. Yeah. Um, this should help with that too because that that board has the the connector just on a piece of PCB that only has two holes, mm-hmm. and it can rock this way. Back and forth. Uh, especially if you have um, a regular hanging off. Oh yeah, definitely. It's um, creating a weight, and then whenever you're stopping, you're shifting. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so uh, this should be even more reliable than that, too, Definitely. because it's using all four holes. Um, so I guess we should talk about what our, like, what are we, what's our plan going forward? Plan going forward? Th- this is all tentative. For the power distribution board? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I guess you, yeah. I like, I'm, I want to do a current sensor, and I do, I want to figure out something, some way to do another layout. Um the problem with I'm gonna snap this off real fast just so I can get a little visual mm-hmm. here. Can you do it in the air or should I? Yeah. Like the smoothest way to snap it off is just put two fingers on it and unclick it at the DF forty so then you can pull directly apart. Yeah. And you're not gonna bend I think your signal pins. I think you're better at that than I am. <laughs> <laughs> um so plan moving forward. I wanna do a layout that's a little bit more fluid for an X design. If you see here, here I will. Yeah, I can scoot the casting out of the um, way. Move you closer to that. This config is it's compatible with an X. It requires you to get a little bit, you know, longer wires than you. Yeah, right? a little bit different routing for your wires. Um, mm-hmm. There's no strain relief on here because most of the platforms that I use actually have holes going through your bottom plate. Mm -hmm. And then I use uh, zip tie for strain relief for your um, XT60, XT60, XT whatever, XT30, whatever you're really going to use it for. Um, That's kind of big with me. I want to do strain relief, but it's going to require me to venture outside the 36 by 36. Yeah. Because of the placement of the DF40, the DF40 connector here that interfaces the boards together, um, because of the placement of that... We're gonna have to shift it kind of a little bit, shift the the pads, the positive and negative battery connection pads back, and then create kind of some through holes mm. board. 
for the so strain can, relief. Yeah, so we can get some strain relief. Yeah. And since since I'm going to be expanding the board out anyway, I can kind of push it a little bit further, maybe mm-hmm. 38, maybe 40 by 40, and get like a good true X build kind of yep. that's going to, it would straddle, almost straddle the um, the 36 by 36 mount holes. Mm-hmm. So you'd kind of have it coming out here like a clover. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some work with that. The only, the only um, snag, I guess you would say, is getting the layout so we're not creating some form of bottleneck for current um, because it'll it'll really mess with your temperature of the board if you have your current going through like a, a super small bottleneck. Right. Whereas here, everything's connecting to the grounding plane or connecting to directly to the plane and not kind of uh, streaming off. Right. So that is definitely in the future, and then putting a current mm-hmm. sensor in there is yeah. important. Yeah, but a that's... A lot of people are liking it. So I think what we want to do is we want to at least get this in the hands of some people who are oh, interested yeah. before that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, we've talked about doing a full production run on it. Yeah, we... We'll see. I mean, making 81 of them doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. Mm-mm. That's kind of like in the panel size that I was doing. So we could potentially... Um, figure out a way to get some a lower number of the PCBs. Yeah, a small a small batch run. That. Or we could price out the eighty one. I mean it's possible the eighty one's not gonna be that that much either. It's it's um. <laughs> I priced it out. It's yeah. It's a little commitment. Yeah. Especially Yeah, it's a little commitment, but I think a lot of people wanted wanted to see a, like a good PDB. Yeah. That they can solder directly to and not yeah. have to worry about yeah. the uh, the power board. But yeah, I mean the power board. I would definitely definitely still run it on an H. I mean, yeah. I mean if it's if it's available, right? Because I'm sure once we kind of get these out there, see what happens with them. Yeah, I mean I'm like, I'm not attached to the power board. Like if I, if everybody wants to buy it with this, then that's not a big deal to me. <laughs> um, I mean that that was kind of a nice thing with mine is they're they're not super pricey. Yeah, they're pretty small, and they're not different like copper weight or anything. So they were made in the batch with everything else. That's true. Um, so, so yeah, basically we're we're gonna start flying it. Yeah, we're um, gonna the, strap it to something. These are prototypes from Osh Park, um, and so we've got three of those, and and I'll run one and. You can run one or two. We'll give um, them to somebody else to run. The yeah. only the only thing is we're we're using a two ounce copper right now. We want to see how it handles uh, just the current needs of some of these crazy motor ESC combinations right. and prop combinations that we see out here. So we'll see how this handles. Yeah, current. maybe maybe that's what we should do. Is like you're going to do another revision with some grounds. Yes. And uh, maybe we should figure out a place we can get. Uh, like higher weight, higher weight prototypes from like three ounce, or three or four, yeah, four ounce coppers, excessive. It is, it's excessive, but yeah, we'll give people peace of mind if that's what they yeah. they really need. There's that that FC PDB you were talking about though, and they they're doing two ounce internal. They are the FC PDB by Ritter-East. well, there's two, there's the, two. Furious FPV has one. Yeah, and then who else? Uh, who does Rotor Geek? Yeah, Rotor Geeks. Was it has the one. Rotor Geeks? Geeks. One? Yeah. yeah, Rotor Geeks has one, and they're doing it. And I believe it looked like two ounce internal layers. They had their two power planes internal, right. and then their signals were on on the outside. Just right. given the fact that I couldn't see any via holes on the outside, yeah, and they were just kind of little punctures through the board. So right. that's what I would. That's that's pretty believe. common anyway yeah. for a four layer board. Yeah, power planes internal. Um, Although I've never heard of that weight being internal. Um, I have. Which um, Osh Park can actually do an internal two ounce, two ounce layer. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I was, I was, I believe, don't quote me on this if, if I'm wrong, correct me. Mm-hmm. But uh, they, uh, I was reading it said if they're going to do a four ounce, they'll do two ounce internal layers and then the two external layers will be one ounce. Hmm. So it would be. I thought it was the opposite, but then obviously I'm wrong. We'll double check. You can always like <laughs> pay somebody extra to do yeah, exactly what you want. For sure. Um, 
But we're trying to keep it two ounce, or not two ounce, but two layer. Yes. Four layer is more expensive. Than, it is definitely. Even for the flight, like, even price. for the control boards, I'm trying to move away from four layer. So, um, both the F three and F four are are four layer, mm-hmm. but um, that restricts how many I can make of them, and then also, uh, it's more expensive. Yeah, definitely. That's. I like. I want to keep it two layer just because it's simple, easy to work with. The yeah. only. Um, about keeping it two later two layer is when you, you add like a current sensor or something like that you're working with different trace widths so now you have to accommodate the fact that your plane isn't as big so it can't dissipate heat as well anymore right. so just proves the challenge <laughs> that's why yeah. we, if we're gonna if we're gonna stick to two layer then it would be best to step up to a different copper weight that can handle more current okay. yeah. yeah i think we've kind of agreed on that mm-hmm. For um, sure. They can't do the black fiberglass core, but that's okay. We can still do transparent solder mask if we do wanna. Yeah. Get them to do that. That's a bad example because the that's the four ounce or the four layer, and only the internal mm-hmm. fiberglass is dark. So it'd be more like that color of the flight controllers if we yeah. did the natural or natural. It would match better than purple, royal purple. It it would. <laughs> I like the purple. I do too. Yeah. It's it's flashy. Okay, so going forward, we're going to do a V4, uh, V4 without the current sensor, just with the grounds, and that's going to be potentially like a, a a release candidate, Yeah, so to speak. For sure, definitely a, a release candidate. I might, I'm tempted to, to, to like put on a strain relief on here, just, yeah. just for peace of mind, anybody that's using an X, because... That's what I don't like about what I see here with PDBs, some of the PDBs and 4-in-1 ESC, mm-hmm. P&B combos, right. PDB combos, is there's no strain relief for that Yep. For that pigtail for your XT60, yep. and that rips pads. Like, yeah. Either do a strain relief or have the connections to the battery be uh, through-hole vias that can actually, you can solder directly into... A through-hole. Uh, yeah, either the Like the alien... Yeah, similar to the Alien, um, but also accommodate your 18, 12, 14 gauge yeah. wires, whatever people They're pretty using. big holes yeah. On, yeah. on the Alien PDB. They are. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, that's just some things we're kind of mulling around. I've talked to some people yeah. about, and they kind of like the idea of more strain relief yeah. and these, the the power, uh, battery power input yeah. kind of closer together. So we'll Yeah. So uh, if you have an opinion, put it in the comments. For sure. Uh, for the few people that are going to watch this. Yeah. Um, also, uh, let's see, we're half hour in. Let's just let's talk about a little bit uh, the process of doing the layout. Like you're using KiCad, right? I am using KiCad. I started out with Eagle, mm-hmm. and then you had all your <laughs> you had all your footprints in KiCad. So I was like, yep. all right, well. Time to make had a you switch, done, I suppose. Had you done a lot of Eagle before that? Um, I had done all my other PDBs in Eagle. Right. I had done uh, probably five or six different kinds of power distribution boards for yeah. anywhere from your Afro Mini to your Naze 32 to your yeah. Rev 5, Rev 6. Right. Um, I also did one for, for some knockoff boards that I was just playing around with. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was all done in Eagle. And then you come along and <laughs> flip my world upside down with KiCad, right. which I have to say... I do like the shortcuts. I mean, I know you can assign shortcuts in Eagle, but it's just a little bit more intuitive in, uh, mm-hmm. in KiCad. And I like I like that you can operate your, your footprints and stuff. Uh, this isn't a talk about KiCad. No, anyway, I, 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 I like KiCad more than it. I like Eagle. But yeah. the industry uses Eagle, which a lot yes. of the industry uses Eagle and Altium. And yeah. Do you think that's... I mean, you've used both. I have not used both. Um do you think that could change? Because KiCad 4 recently came out, and that's what I've been using. I like this. I like to think so. I like to think that you know the the open source is is kind of the way to go, only because you have people making their own plugins right. that aren't you know closed source. You can make a plugin that exports a bill of materials proprietary to your needs. So I think yep. that's kind of an awesome ability. Yeah, and they have Python bindings. Yeah, they do. Which I haven't used, but it's pretty neat. I see a, I'm not a big 
programmer, <laughs> but I see a lot of a lot of potential and a lot of people doing a lot of things with yeah. it that I just piggy piggyback off their yeah. scripts and stuff. Yeah, I mean the re- the reason that I went that way is simply because I was planning on going commercial. Yeah, and the moment you go commercial with a, a commercial software, they expect you to pay, which makes sense. Like it, it makes sense. Like as somebody who's asking people to buy hardware to yeah for sure give me money, like it makes sense to have a model like that, but. I was trying to start up as, as cheaply as I could. No, for sure. Those um, those programs aren't cheap. Spe- Altium, Eagle, they're still... Yeah, yeah and they're, they're limited, right? Like, like the moment you need more layers or more board area, they, you can actually, like, bump into a higher payment tier as well. Yes. So it's um, kind of hard to... And depending estimate. on what you're using it for, um, Altium, I believe, has a, a yearly subscription. Yeah. And... That's... Like, yeah. It's yeah. for a commercial... I put my for a commercial product. I sure. put my I put my money into the boards instead, and, <laughs> and used open source software. Yeah. You know, with all the things that come with that. Um, I've been really happy with it. Of course, I don't know better. This is kind of like the benefit of starting with it. There's there's definitely the perks of both. Um, designing designing with them. Uh, I'm trying to think of kind of snags. I don't really use auto route a lot, but for a board like yours, auto route would be uh, <laughs> essential. To getting a lot of a lot of that stuff done because it's it would just be super tedious doing doing your through your uh, your through vias kind of working everything around right. with me it was kind of straightforward I didn't do any auto routing yeah. but uh, the auto route capability of Eagle compared to KiCad is yeah is but better. they don't like everything I've seen doesn't actually recommend auto routing yeah no really nobody likes auto routing right. unless you have Lots and lots of stuff. Yeah, lots and lots of stuff. Where... Well, one thing I realized like later on into my keycad use was the push and shove router. Did you ever use that? I didn't. I, like I said, like most of my traces are straight to the power plane, yeah. and then around, you know, keeping keeping everything really central. Like that's the the, the one thing about designing with uh, the MPS twenty three oh seven the the buck regulator is that. You want to keep everything really tight together, yeah. or you have, you can get inductance issues. You right. can get right. um, timekeeping issues. It's yeah. just more stable to keep it. I right. go with the, what the factory recommends, and since yep. they built the product, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. Tell them. I mean that's that's what I <laughs> like. I got this far just copying data sheets yeah. and stuff. Data sheets um, are the way to go. So. Uh, yeah, well, the, the push and shove router allows you to drag a trace, right, when mm-hmm. you're doing it manually, but it can actually, like, move the other traces uh, oh. in the direction and line them all up for you. So. Interesting, yeah. I can see where that so would be definitely useful. It's not like it's actually, like, connecting them all, but it means that, like, when you're routing, like, eight next to each other, you just draw the first one and then shove the first one, like, out of the way as gotcha. you do the second and, and so on and so on and so forth. Kind of like, kind of like where yours, it creates, like, almost like this perfect, perfect arc and wave. Like, if you have another one you need to put, say, here, yeah. it'll just shove those two up yep. and just yeah. create that. Yeah, and it can do, like... That's awesome, yeah. It can do, like, 16 I'll to, that way. I'll have to play with it. It's, yeah, it, it's really useful. Like, like, the tricky part with KiCad is that there's different modes that you can view... I don't know if you use like the default mode. There's also OpenGL mode, yeah. and some of these things, like the push and shove router, are only available with OpenGL. I did notice that. Um, and so it took some just like looking to figure out, like, hey, like you need to be in OpenGL mode if you want this to actually work. Yep, I noticed that with some of the uh, the exchange feature, mm-hmm. it works in OpenGL mode, but it <laughs> doesn't really necessarily work. But well, okay, it works. It's just a lot more finicky in your default mode. Yeah. You have to like click on it, move, and then click exchange instead of just yeah. having it continuously exchanging for parts. So it's kind of a pain to work with, but yeah. then you can switch to different modes and it'll function properly. Right. I'm trying to think if there's any other issues that I had when I was doing this. Just placement for soldering. Um, mm. I I did all this hot air, hot air reflow, right, or hot air soldering. Yeah. Um. So, the placement was interesting because you don't want them too close together because if you do need a hand solder do any kind of hand repairs yep. um, it kind of creates a pain yep. um, and also the DF40 I remember when I first when I first did the DF40 connector mm-hmm. the pins the pin pitch is super thin 0.4 yeah 
and I actually put that on the ground plane as opposed to just creating separate traces right. to the ground. Right. And uh, yeah, I couldn't solder that. I couldn't right. hand solder because you're yeah. trying to dissipate 40 watt soldering iron with two ounce. Yeah, it's just gonna just sap up all the heat. I right. couldn't. I couldn't work with it. I actually yeah. ended up having to heat it up with a hot air gun and then <laughs> wick off the solder from the. Huh from the, the pin traces yeah it was, interesting. It was interesting yeah. yeah my boards had that same problem where i i put the ground plane between all these pins mm -hmm. and like suddenly it's not defined where the solder goes to the pin anymore mm -hmm. um and so for all all my designs you'll see an iteration where i had to like draw the exclude around it so that the plane wouldn't go there yeah anymore. that's that's what i ended up doing i i actually saw that you did it right after like I should have looked at your design first with how you how you distributed the 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 ground lead or the ground traces to the DF forty because yeah. that would have saved me a re probably a revision. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I like I, I even changed that, like the the power the like the simple pull loop powers on revision five, I think. Yeah. Five or seven or something. And that that was part of the experimentation because those if you do do the individual pads, they're pretty weak. In terms of like the copper's uh, coherence, mm -hmm. coherence, cohesion to the yeah. to the underlying Adhesion. fiberglass. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm an engineer, in other words. Yeah, <laughs> yeah me neither. It uh, doesn't stick well. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't stick to the fiberglass. They rip well. up easily. They do. Boom. Um, and so, like, I've I've been even thinking about doing another revision of that, where you actually just bring the traces out on both sides, um, just so that you have more area that's attached. To the mm, like a almost like a thermal relief, like create yeah. it on a plane and then thermal relief it to yeah. the ground plane. Right. That's actually smart. I think it would actually help a lot because here you have these super thin, we're talking what, 0.2 millimeter traces, if I recall, 0.18 millimeter traces. I don't remember. They were super small traces. Six mil. Yeah. And they, they rip up, they can rip up. So yeah. if we actually use two planes or two um, almost pads, if right. you will, Right. And then connect those thermally to the ground plane in a power plane. I think it would. Yeah. I think it would help with uh, rigidity for yeah, sure. Yeah. The reason that I changed that is that like the footprint they put in the data sheet for the DF40 says no traces right underneath it. Really. Yeah. I'm not ex exactly sure why. Um, whether it's like if you put a trace there, it might electrically connect, and in that case, it's okay as long as it's lined up. But. You don't want to like run a perpendicular trace underneath it. Yeah. Uh, right next to the pad. It's so interesting. I, I, di I didn't know it. I yeah. didn't read the data sheet for the DF40. Yeah, I was just looking at stack heights, honestly. Yeah. So it, so they would actually recommend using just almost planes. Or no. What do you no. mean, almost planes? Like like underneath, like so you have your pads on the outside, mm -hmm. right? Like on yeah. the inside of those, they say no traces. Oh, okay. But then there is a core in there that you can actually wrap traces. Okay, no, I know what you're talking. Sorry, I, yeah, I think I was just mis mishearing you. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, the, I'm glad you clarified. Yeah, yeah, the the bottom of these is like flat. Yeah. Up until that center core, and that's the only place where it actually would not sit flat if you were to have a trace under there. It could create kind of like a yeah you don't want it to rock yeah that yeah. makes sense yeah I actually still do some of that yeah. I could still do route some things out hmm. underneath um, but that's more common like I don't do that on the twenty pin anymore I only do that on the eighty um, because you can only basically fit like four traces in that center core so I route it to that center core and then out um, those are out there small traces yeah that's there's six mil. I'm used to dealing with uh, big traces because of power's on all of them. Right. And especially these things, some people are pushing like 80 amps, 90 amps yep. through their power distribution board. So yep. it's, I try to keep traces real, real, real. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm doing all, all this uh, signal routing. So I basically did the minimal for Oshpark. Kind of works out well because like Oshpark's minimums are six mil, six mil, and then Macrofab is five mil, five mil. Like sure. So we're well, like well within tolerance that it'll actually be manufactured right. It's actually funny you mentioned the spacing because once we switch to like a four ounce or a three ounce board, the the time it requires to etch the copper out of the board um, actually eats away at at the topper 
the most top layer as it right. kind of etches down. So it kind of creates these V grooves, yeah. which creates more space between your components. So yeah. most of the, the way that this is designed, most of the components should be good. Um, I'll have to double check for spacing, you know, for the, the distance between pads for connects of uh, your resistors and capacitors, etc. Right. But should be, should be good. Yeah. We'll, we'll do a prototype. Yeah, for sure. Of those different ounces, different weights. Well, is there anything else we should cover, or should we leave this at a short 40 minutes? Short, short 40 minutes sounds perfect for me. Uh, thanks for, thanks for kind of interviewing me today. It's kind of nice. Yeah. I like to talk about what I do. Yeah, it's well, it, it's been a huge help. Like, it's, you know, like, I did this other power board, and people come to me, and I'm like, this really is not very good. <laughs> and it's like, well, Sean's working on it. Sean's working on it. I'm glad that you picked that yeah. up before. Because, like, before I launched, I was basically like, I can't pick up anything else. No, definitely. And, and I, I kind of got that. Like, when, I, when, we yeah. first, when we first discussed it, I was like, hey, I'll, I'll do it. I mean, yeah. I like what you're doing here, and I'll do your power board because I want a power board. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to use your power board. No offense, but no, I don't like your power board. It's fine with me. <laughs> you're not alone either. Um, no, it seems like it's the biggest complaint. Yeah. Thus far. That and price. Yeah. yeah still working on that. Um. But yeah, so thanks for doing that. Um, if anybody's actually watching this and interested, um, drop a comment and we might actually be able to get you a prototype as yeah. well. Yeah, sure. Um, and a discount on the boards if you're interested and want to be a tester. Um, places you can go for more information, uh, chickadee.tech. You can also email support at chickadee.tech. Um, that'll come to me. And if you want it to go to Sean, I can give it to Sean. Sure. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. It's it's awesome. I'm excited to see your X design as well. I am too. Um, and uh, I'm excited to be able to, to do more prototypes as well. Um, I love doing the prototypes. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's fun. It's a challenge. That's what overcoming challenges that this kind of, this new tech is kind of yeah. creating is it's fun. Yeah. yeah I, hardware, de hardware design is really fun. It's, it's kind of slow. Waiting for new things. Yeah, Pro waiting for prototypes is the slowest thing. And yeah. anticipation, you're just like, what did I even do on the last revision? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I had some where it was like I ordered it and then I immediately realized there was something wrong. Like revision one of the F3, I didn't even like populate. Many a times have I sent emails with the new version. I was like, as soon as I submitted that, I realized that I forgot to connect this pad. Right. Here's this current pad. See, like, I don't know why, like, Osh Park is really good at having self-service, mm -hmm. but they don't have a, like, you're in the queue, but we haven't penalized you yet. Like, upload new files. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe people would just constantly keep uploading and yeah. they could potentially create an issue when they actually do go to penalize. We're like, uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, they do usually get penalized pretty quickly. To be yeah, fair. for sure. Um, like the M zero board, you, I didn't tell you this, but it got super swift service. Nice. Like that's always lucky. And I was like, I don't even have parts yet. Like I hadn't <laughs> even fit, I had to finish the bill of materials, and then like I was kind of waiting to order from DigiKey until I finished like the VTX prototype. Yeah. And uh, some of the other prototypes, which I still haven't finished, um, but I finally ordered the M zero parts because I'm actually doing contract work for Adafruit that's on the same chip that the M0 board has. And I'm in school, so it's kind of, I like I like helping, it's just, yep. I gotta keep them in academics yeah, and I, in check yeah. before I can play around. It's usually on the weekends that I get to play around with yeah. any kind of design work. Just fine, right? Yeah, I love it. There is like that turnaround time, so oh, it's yeah. good to have something to fill the time in between. Cool. Well, well yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks for watching. Drop a comment, like, subscribe, share it, do whatever you want. And uh, I'll see you next time.